Good afternoon, everyone. These are some of the strange weather anomalies that have happened across our planet during the last two months. Good afternoon, everyone. China Agriculture and here Ink Girl live streaming herself, screaming, oppose Xi Jinping's authoritarian tyranny, live throwing ink on a poster. Not more than eight hours later, security forces are at her door. Her Twitter has been removed. The Chinese government quickly put out a mandate, remove all the political posters of the CCP leaders so nobody can deface them. And now it seems the ink has turned to the buildings, but this is the Beijing Municipal High People's Court. There's definitely a movement in the country. He's not my president. And the inkings seem to continue and amplify. It has turned her into a mythical hero fighting a dragon. But when we look at Chinese crop losses, what's going to happen when this entire generation of disgruntled youth has their food prices double or triple? And we can forecast out water cycles or rainfall cycles in China. Central East China going to become drier over the next 20 years. South China as well. North China as well. You can see the monsoon is moved by sunspot activity. We can see where the drought periods were during China, another drought on the way. And if we're talking about cosmic cycles, once in a 2000 year event, at the bare minimum, Dalton minimum is the blue. Early 1800s, we're at the red. Solar activity is forecast to decline from this point forward. This will have pronounced effects on global crop production and mix in another layer of the soy and the sorghum tariff war going on, China grabbing Brazil's production of soya, Argentine soybeans plummet, American wheat down, and global total grains forecast to be down 40 million tons next year. We got these World Trade Organization challenges against five nations. Looking at the interwoven pattern of just-in-time delivery. Hey, what could go wrong with that? Ink Girl has definitely started some movement inside China. And if all the students in this generation were to start protesting the government because of high food prices, you would just expect that things would not be delivered due to the chaos within that country. Good afternoon, everyone. Greenland, the summer that never was. Late snowpack lingering into July harms the shorebird breeding season. Case in point, up to today, an additional five foot of snowfall. Looking at temperature anomalies, I don't see that North Pole exceptionally warm. Actually, it looks like the opposite. We know grand solar minimums, the intertropical convergence zone shifts. This shift might be responsible for Nova Scotia losing 60% of its blueberry crop. The shortages of grapes in Europe that are also causing a vinegar shortage. And why in India, the new investment for hail netting on Himachal's apple plantations. Good afternoon, everyone. Arctic temperatures below normal for 50 days. Media doesn't talk about this. The reality of Arctic sea ice compared to IPCC projections, if it is the hottest year ever, why is there this much cool in our oceans? Why are the temperature forecasts going out to the end of July this cool across the United States? Good afternoon, everyone. Antarctica, always mysterious. Remember the third largest iceberg in history to break off November 2017 is now trapped in massive pack ice. Japan Meteorological Association, long-term sea ice trend, Antarctica growing by a lot. This is why Japanese scientist Dr. Takeda Kunihiko comes out and says, we need to focus on cooling, not warming. Antarctic sea ice about to break through the 1981 to 2010 average, but somehow in the newer models, Antarctic sea ice has decreased. Looking at Antarctic winters, downtrend, polar amplification from CO2 not detectable in Antarctica, and now over 600 papers confirming solar impacts on the climate. This is your timeline as our planet cools and the wider the waves become, the more unstable our growing seasons are. Good afternoon, everyone. More information emerges about the year without a summer for Greenland's shorebirds now starving. No nesting grounds or bare ground. Also in the Arctic, these unknown, unexplainable giant spheres. 
Looking at sea ice thickness, 2008 compared to 2018, quite a difference. And even from 2017 to 2018, looks like ice is increasing. And this personal image was sent to me, only you can prevent climate change. Good afternoon, everyone. Australia setting coldest temperature records ever, but it's not the coldest winter ever. Biggest snowstorm for 18 years. Coldest morning in at least 60 years for many parts of the East Coast. Forecasters presenting 80% chance above normal of above average temperatures. Wherever you see that red, oh, this is extreme frost warnings and extreme frosty temperatures to last over the next five days. Taking a look at the Japan floods and how much of Japan was flooded with once in thousand year rains. Also, is anybody else getting these on your videos that's doing climate change analysis? Good afternoon, everyone. An excellent resource for the Grand Solar Minimum. Abundant Harvest, interactive PDF, table of contents, thick with ideas for how to prepare for the Grand Solar Minimum. We're talking about cycles. Joe Bastardi, we're getting back into something 1930s-esque in the hurricane forecast. And what do I see? Two feet of snow on Greenland, possibly more over the next five days. Also, Greenland ice increasing dramatically. How about that sea ice in the Arctic that was supposed to be melting to almost nothing? Purple, that's three feet thick. Good afternoon, everyone. While the media focuses on the heat wave in northern Europe, uh, it seems they forgot northern Africa, southern part of Europe, and anything east below normal temperatures. They should also explain to you that it's snowing up in Canada. The air flows are pulling air from the remnants of the warm hurricane anyway, straight up to where it's record warm temperatures right now. It's a little disingenuous of them not to explain the mechanisms behind it. Snowing in July, Resolute Bay, not making the news. How about tonight's forecast? Freezing, freezing, below freezing, and a sliver above freezing. Right side, anomalies, Greenland ice melt, where it's blue, below normal melt. And these are low temperatures across the United States. These are Celsius though, so 20 degrees Celsius equals 70 Fahrenheit. Doesn't look like a full-on global heat wave to me. Even down in Guatemala, 23 degrees Celsius, that's not even 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Good afternoon, everyone. You've heard about this heat wave sweeping the UK and northern parts of Europe. Satellite photos here, Europeans blistering heat waves. Well, it's starting to reveal ancient ruins everywhere. Foundations, ancient henges, but along with the colliding weather fronts, impressive hail in France massive snows in Italy, and where's this lightning coming from? Good afternoon, everyone. NOAA's next generation weather satellite malfunctioned. And what's interesting in seeing ice, all four satellites that maintain key records of Arctic and Antarctic sea ice are going to all have disruptions at the exact same time. They even stated last year that the next possible replacements won't be able to launch at least until the early 2020s. It's going to cause a gap. Fast forward to this week's NOAA malfunction. Now they're going to push that back even further as if the engineers can't figure out what's going on. All right in time for this next cool water pulse to enter the Arctic, causing more sea ice. And isn't that convenient? They're not going to be able to map it, nor all the mass budget increases of ice on Greenland. It's almost as if they're going to disrupt this so they don't show you the increases because they don't want to have to explain it. Good afternoon everyone. Hudson Bay dark blue ice anomalies. So rare they need icebreakers at the end of July going to be going into August to deliver supplies. I thought that's strange. And sure enough, on the regional ice charts, showing the same thing. But Environment Canada, you would never even notice anything the way they have their weekly ice coverage for the season. But don't worry, we're going to lose all this coverage next year as all four satellites that maintain Arctic and Antarctic sea ice are going to go down at the same time. 
and hopefully such a simple device such as the thermometer will stay functional so we can continue to see that Arctic temperatures are below normal.